Hello, and thank you for taking the time to view this video on the CEM PetWave. The CEM PetWave is a remote microwave applicator used for glove box and hot cell applications where space is a consideration. The purpose of this video is to supplement the product bulletins and provide further information on the configuration and feature set of the CEM PetWave. Now we're going to move on to the components of the CEM PetWave. First, the main component is the remote microwave applicator. This is what would sit inside your glove box or hot cell. The remote microwave applicator will accept vessels in the top side of the applicator. It's connected to the generator controller via a set of cables. And this is the cable bundle. I'm grabbing it, and you can see the end of it. These will connect to the remote, remote microwave applicator. And we'll show the connections a little bit later on. Push that back. Then you've got your microwave generator controller. This will set external of the glove box or the hot cell. This houses the power supply, microwave generator. The controller feature is through this display or keypad. I look on this side is the main power supply, and right here is where the cooling gas will come in. And Finally, let me slide over a little bit more, we're going to talk about the vessels. There's three vessel sizes that come with the system. There's a 1 ml vessel, a 2 ml vessel, and a 4 ml vessel. The vessels have a closure with a screw cap and a septa, or there is a multi-port head made of peak. So this gives you an idea of what the system looks like. Now we're going to go into further detail about each of the four components. Now we're going to move on to the remote cavity. Uh, what I've got in my hand is the remote cavity that's going to reside in your glove box or hot cell. Uh, the cavity is about four and a half inches wide, about ten and a half centimeters. The height is right at five inches or about 12.6 centimeters. Where the vessels are going to go in is right over here and the access is right around eight tenths of an inch or two centimeters. That's the outside diameter of the vessels. You know, the main features, and you're not going to be able to see them in the cavity, you have to take my word for it, is first an infrared temperature sensor. Located on the floor of the cavity and looking up is an infrared temperature sensor. The infrared temperature sensor reads the temperature of the reaction vessel contents and controls the microwave input power. So it will bring it up to the reaction temperature that the user defines and then maintain it at that temperature. Next, you're going to have a stirring feature. Underneath the cavity is a feature that will stir the reaction vessel contents using off-the-shelf stir bars. If you don't, do not want to utilize the stirring feature, you can turn it off in method programming and not place the stir bars into the reaction vessel. Next is a cooling feature. I can't see in the cavity, but there's four inlet ports. And we have a gas line attached right over here, and we'll go over that shortly. A gas line attached to the remote cavity. And it's controlled by a solenoid valve. It'll open and close, typically at the end of the reaction vessel, so you can quench the reaction vessel and move on to the next processing step. So that covers the main features of the, re of the remote cavity. We'll cover the uh, connections made to the generator later. Next, we'll cover the generator controller that is connected to the remote cavity. Uh, the generator controller is housed in the Discover S class. It lo should look familiar to you. Um, inside the system is the power supply and the magnetron. The magnetron generates the microwave energy that's transmitted over to the remote applicator. On the front of the system is the user interface. Uh, this is where you would program methods and start and stop operation of the system. Off to the side is the main power supply. Excuse me, not the main power supply, the on-off switch. And down below is where the gas supply line is coming, it comes in. I'd recommend using either house air or nitrogen for the cooling feature. Then lastly, let me turn it all the way around and I want to show where the cable bundle comes out of the system. It comes out of the back side of the 
generator controller, and it actually is a bundle. There's actually four lines that are coming out of here. The main microwave transmission line, and then the connection for the stirring feature, temperature feature, and the gas cooling feature. So that's going to cover the remote generator controller. Next, we're going to move on to the cable bundle. Next, we're going to cover the cable bundle that connects the controller to the remote microwave applicator. And you can see the cable bundle coming out of the back of the, of the controller. And it, I've got it wound around here. And it's approximately 10 feet in length or a little over 3 meters. In real life, you would run the cable connection through the wall of your hot cell or your glove box, and then you would connect it up to your remote microwave applicator. And in the bundle, there's four connectors. And there's the gas line, that's the peak connector here. The two middle, two middle connectors that I'm showing are pin connectors. There's an eight pin connector that's used for the mag stirring feature, and a six pin connector that's used for the temperature feature. And the last one, the blue is a screw connector that's used for the microwave transmission cable. So that's how I generate or put the microwave energy into the, into the cavity. Now I'm going to show you how to make the connections. Uh, the connections I recommend you go from the bottom to the top. So first I would start with the gas line and it's a peak fitting, it's a screw connection. And so it's just going to screw directly in there. Next I want to find my uh, 8 pin connector. You can't mess them up, they only go in one way. The, the connectors are, are fitted or keyed. I'll press right in and for my temperature sensor which is a 6 pin connector, it'll go right in. And then lastly for the microwave transmission cable, I'm going to stand up here because I need to get on there and you want to get it to bite. And get the other hand so you can see and just make the, the screw connection right over there. Now, when you do this connection, you do not need to use a wrench to tighten it. Matter of fact, you do not want to use a wrench. You just want to hand tighten it. So this is what it will, the configuration will look like after you make the connections. And lastly, we're going to talk about the vessels that come with the CEM PET Wave. The vessels come in three different sizes. There is a 1 ml vessel, a 2 ml vessel, and a 4 ml vessel. I'm going to pick up the 2 ml vessel and just talk about the, the features of the vessel. Uh, the vessels all have a conical bottom, uh, and it's a thin-walled conical bottom. I need the thin wall so that I can read the temperature using the infrared sensor in the remote cavity. And the tops, the tops of all three vessels are the same. The opening is the same, and the thread design is the same. So I can use one cap for all three vessels. And the caps that are used with the vessel are, are either a screw cap, and I'm going to show that here. Whoops, it fell off. We'll pick up this one right here. It's just a screw cap with a septa on it. It has a hole. The screw cap with septa is when you're using syringe filling and syringe removing. So that would screw directly on there. Let's put those back down. I want to pick up the 4 ml vessel. It's the 4 ml vessel, and you can see the, the, the opening is still the same. The, conical bottom, and the uh, multi-port peak head is two components. First one would screw on there, and then the multi-port head would screw on top of that. And there's seven ports that are inside, or that lead inside the vessel. If I take it off, and we're going to try and take a look at the underside of this. If you take a look at the underside, I'm hoping that he can see this. There's seven inlet ports. There's more than enough to cover your needs in terms of addition, removal, vacuum, gas addition. Now, let's put that back together. I want to show one last thing, and that's how the vessels fit inside the cavity. I'm going to show first, just this is the uh, 1 ml vessel with the screw cap on it. It would sit in just like that, and you can take it out. For the multi-head port, what will happen is it will go in, it has a little retaining clip on the side right over here. You'll press that down to remove the clip out and let it back in to put the clip in to hold the vessel head. So that covers all the information I wanted to try to convey about the CEM PET wave. 
I want to thank you for your time. If you have any further questions specific to applications or on features that were not covered, please contact your area representative.